good to see the duty hasn't increased, almost unprecedented to see fuel duty, um, to have six years of zero increase when it used to go up in line with sort of RPI. But you have to be prepared for those increases to come, so controlling fuel bills is a very important activity for fleet operators. The threshold is coming down to 110 grams per kilometre, but we've got good warning. It's coming in in April 2018. And to be honest, a lot of our customers are already well on the way to 110 gram per kilometre as a fleet average anyway. We've seen it with a lot of our customer fleets. You know, last year, new registrations up to August, 114 grams per kilometre. So people are already heading in that direction. Obviously, those who aren't looking at ultra low CO2 emission vehicles and lowering their CO2 will have a, a, a cost um, premium coming their way. Keep an eye on where the consultation's going, understand what the government's going to be doing with those thresholds and making sure that they're in the best shape possible over the next five years to minimise the impact of those tax increases. With regards to the 100% writing down allowances, the threshold is moving from 75 grams per kilometre down to 50 grams per kilometre. It won't have a massive impact on the fleet and leasing industry because it applies to um, vehicles that are purchased outright and the majority of, of the fleet industry leases its vehicles because of operational benefits and VAT tax savings. company car drivers who are in diesel cars, they were expecting to see a 1% reduction in their company car tax in 2016-17 tax year. What this means is that the 3% diesel supplement is going to remain until 2020, so they're actually going to have a 2% increase in their company car tax, which is at the same rate, 2% increase, as petrol drivers will see. Going forwards, we're going to be CO2-based taxation for the foreseeable future. There's been uncertainty within the industry about where taxation might go. So this allows fleet managers and fleet operators to plan uh, the type of vehicles that they're going to have on their fleets with more certainty. Uh, we're able to provide advice on that. Free fuel for private use is an interesting one because um, a lot of drivers may take that under the view of it's hassle-free and also that they're protected from fuel price increases. In fact, what actually happens is the tax increases year on year, um, but this year they actually get a bit of a double whammy because the tax on their free fuel for private use has gone up while the price of fuel is falling. We believe that now's a very good time for companies to do a review of the cost-effectiveness of this benefit can be a bit complicated and we can we can help walk them through this. Historically and um, for the last 10 years diesel has been the fuel of choice for most fleet operators because um, the, the tax system has encouraged um, low CO2 emitting vehicles which diesel are but we're now at a stage where these ultra low emission vehicles are coming in. We've now got over 4,500 ultra low emission vehicles in our customers' fleets. The key thing is to look at the type of vehicles you need, the type of drive cycles and activities that you're putting them to, and then find the right type of technology. So as an example, if you're um, working in an urban environment, a pure electric van could work really well to give you zero emissions. We'd always um, recommend having a bit of a strategy plan to look at where you're going with your vehicle technologies and your fuel types to make sure you've got the right vehicles in the right applications. When we're talking about low and ultra low emission vehicles, we're, we're not talking about little two-seater city cars. You know, we have executive cars that fall below 110 gram per kilometre. So it's about choosing the right technology and the right type of car rather than suddenly deciding that we have to drive a little city car because that's the only thing that's, yeah. that, that's uh, low CO2. And we do have some smaller, sort, sort of light commercial vehicles 
that, that are electric and you can get low emission versions of. Over time, we believe that you're going to see more lower emitting commercial vehicles coming into the marketplace. The interesting thing is, we already have a lot of these driverless aids such as lane departure, self-parking cars, um, variable cruise control. So it's actually the, more the legislation that's preventing the autonomous vehicles being on our roads now. I think we'll see automated vehicles, especially on motorways for instance, coming in sooner than people think. Currently that stands, as you say, at 130 grams per kilometre. Um, we believe that it will probably go down to 110 grams per kilometre in 2018, as the other writing down thresholds have. But there's been no announcement as yet. We can see that it's really a natural progression um, in line with the way um, emissions are going overall within our industry. There were no um, specific changes within the budget, but the accounting standards have been announced earlier, uh, earlier last year with regards to changes that are pending. So with regards to that, we're helping our customers with this change in accounting standards and we're producing uh, management information that they can use for those changes. We've got um, some other seminars and conferences that we're running that will explain in detail the changes and what the impact is.